as the drivers behind such growth in the use of technology across the world, not only in very high growth regions such as Russia. This is a complex diagram. Give me, please, just a minute to describe it. Um, I actually took this from McKinsey's. You can find this diagram on McKinsey's website. It's in the public domain. The axis, the Y axis on the right, is effectively profitability, value. Along here are different types of organizations. We begin at the left with organizations such as iron and steel, electricity, production, freight companies, whose job it is to convert from one state to another. I take coal, I create electricity. I take steel, I create vehicles. And that is the way that I add value in this world. And we observe that they do add value, but they're very closely clustered together. It's difficult to be very good or very bad. It's relatively well understood. Most of the focus is on operational efficiency. The next step up are organizations who add their value by bringing together buyers and sellers, market organizations. It's true you can add value. It's such a busy world that by finding the right product, technology, service and bringing it to somebody who needs it is not a trivial task. It's something that brings value. Retail banks, retailers, they bring together goods and, and buyers. Another thing, they, there's a spread, you can be good and bad. On the right hand side here, the type of organization or a department within an organization, which I'm sure is very common here in the Navy country, which is the fastest growing, particularly in this region. This is the fastest growing employer of labor is in this sector. It shows the potential for the greatest profitability. Incidentally, the IT spend in those who are successful is twice that for those who are not. And even McKinsey do not have the perfect word for what these organizations are. The best McKinsey can describe is these are organizations who add their value in the world by solving problems. They solve problems. I'm sure almost everybody in this audience has that job. You come in in the morning and you will have email or workflow and you solve problems. To do it, to solve these problems, you will require to collaborate with your fellow employees. You will require to contact suppliers. You will probably require to use several different business processes. You might even need to change some business processes. In fact, the needs that you have, if your job is to solve problems, will be substantially different from bringing together buyers and sellers or from managing a production process. Most organizations in the world are moving to the right. Electricity companies are trying to solve their customer problems. They are offering things such as electricity pensions. So when you retire, you receive a pension of electricity. Telephone companies don't just rent wires in the ground. They try and solve issues of communication. They're trying to solve their customer's problems. Because by moving right, they can increase the differentiation and increase the profitability. But this has a fundamental and deep impact upon the infrastructure. My needs down here are really quite different from my infrastructural needs if I am moving to the right. It also has a fundamental impact on the role of IT. Here's a graph from CIO magazine, it's a global uh, graph showing that IT is taking 64% of IT uh, directors see their role as actually driving the business. Knowing what technology can do, how can we help move to the right? How can we help improve our differentiation and our competitiveness? Yes, a significant proportion still see the role as simply supporting the business. And none is right and none is wrong. But it's a fact that as we move to the right, more IT organizations are being asked to 
to proactively drive the business. And as a result, of course, they pour it more directly. And what issues do we face? As we all of us, all of our societies move right, incidentally, particularly Eastern Europe is the fastest growing as organizations move right into problem solving. What issues do we in IT face? We have to have a more sophisticated presentation layer, more sources, more interactivity. We need more users to be able to make decisions at whatever level. We face more changes. As most of our employees are solving problems, they are likely to want to continually improve and adapt processes. And of course, in solving problems, we need access to more data sources. So bang. How can Oracle help with this? How does this relate to Oracle's strategy and you as our customers and partners? I hope both customers and partners in many instances. Well, at the bottom level, at the very bare level, we still provide database, middleware, and business applications. If I'm very honest, the database and the middleware, I'm often asked, why did Oracle do middleware? You're an expert in database. But what is a database? It's really a provider of data services to the above layers. Middleware simply provides a broader range of services. Transaction handling, identity management, uh, so on and so forth. In many ways, they're part of a similar platform. We had a choice. As we developed our product strategy to meet the requirements of organizations moving to the right, and indeed those who stay where they are, we could have created a whole new product set using proprietary standards. But we chose to create a whole new product set which used, wherever possible, open standards. It means that you can, if you wish, use Microsoft Active Directory as a repository for an identity management system that we provide. It means you can use typical message passing bus, but use our, or this is the result of our acquisition strategy and our approach. You can see the differences between the major vendors are actually quite significant in this diagram. The most recent addition, not only does Oracle continue to support strongly the use of uh, Unix and Windows, we work very closely with Microsoft and Windows, but we now particularly support Linux. Many of you will be aware that we actually sell our own support solution for those of you who are using certain versions of Linux. So we have the complete stack. Can you move on to the next slide, please? They look similar, but I have the next slide as well. For those who are using centralized data management, large-scale data management, of course, I'm pointing my laser pointer at this screen here. I think it might be better to point it up here. We have, of course, Enterprise Edition, the primary license of Oracle Database. Down here we have Standard Edition, smaller organizations, standard edition one, targeted at much smaller organizations, and express edition, an entry level uh, free database. But of course, not everybody can manage every byte of data centrally, particularly in large regions, often with remote offices, and remote locations. You need to have a capability for local data management. So we've strengthened our capability in, first of all, disconnected clients, strengthened a lot of the development of Oracle Lite. So this is a disconnected client, uh, operates independently um, of the main database. Times 10 database gives us the capability for very high performance. It's effectively a cache front end to the Oracle database. It's the easiest way of seeing it. It's a cache in memory, SQL capable, front end to the Oracle database, particularly useful in the world of finance, communications and defense.